welcome to the season premiere of Reality Check, your weekly deep dive into all things unscripted television. This week we're totally focusing on America's Got Talent finale. I'm bored of this already. No, I'm just kidding. It's really the voice. <laughs> and I'm here <laughs> with American Idol season six standout Melinda Doolittle, who had a slight heart attack, as I said, America's Got Talent. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited that we're doing this again. This is the voice. Do, 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 do. <laughs> We've got to discuss the voice season five premiere week. <laughs> and I specialize in 16 year old girls. We saw 17 different singers advance through to the battle rounds in one week. That's a lot of talent. That's a ratio I can live with, especially when the five or six people who didn't go through were also talented. It is actually wonderful. It's one of the things that I really love about The Voice is that every time we're seeing great people sing, and I, I love that, even though like I can already tell normally with how they set up the audition and everything, who's going through and who's not, you know, they'll show a few good ones and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, bless your heart, we're gonna hear your whole story and off you go. The other strange thing I thought about this week was how many times they were like, the gang is back together, the chemistry is great. This original group does have some great chemistry. You excited to bring CeeLo and Christina back? I am. The chemistry is really great. We really like each other. The Fabulous Four, it's kind of like deja vu. Oh. It would be like if I came on the show and I was like, Melinda, I really like you. No, but actually, I, I really, I do like you. I actually do like you. You know, I mean, these guys are like brothers, and I'm happy to be part of it. Mm, goodness gracious me, what a needy little fishy. And it's edited. Like, we're, we're not at the live rounds yet, so we'll see, you know? I mean, no, <laughs> nobody on The Voice is that good of an actor, so if they're not getting along, it's gonna, it's gonna you know, be percolating, as Mary J. Blige would put it. But let's talk you about who your favorites were this week. Oh, Donna. Donna, Donna, and Donna. You go, girl. <laughs> she was my favorite, first of all, because she sang the living daylights out of You Are So Beautiful. Mm. You're everything I need. I mean, just the taste, the restraint, and then the power, and the, I mean. It was like this, Donna, and this, it was like, it, and then this. <laughs> so but she became my favorite when she wrapped her legs around Adam <laughs> Levine. <laughs> Who among us has not thought about that moment? Donna was in my top three this week. Interestingly, and I don't even know why, but Johnny Gray was probably my favorite. There is something about the tone of his voice and the feeling okay. that he brought to that Killers song. I got so good, I'm not a soldier. He had like a certain stage presence to him and a certain feeling and yeah. just that tone of his voice. And I hate to say that like reality singing competitions are making me feel better as a human being, but it kind of did. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I need him to cut his hair because when they okay. showed pictures of him, when he was stationed in the Middle East, he was looking fine. <laughs> with a capital F, I, N, and E. And now he's just sort of fine lowercase. You know what? Okay, I'll be honest. I didn't, I mean, I, his voice is great. I didn't pay enough attention to decide on what his hair should be, but <laughs> his voice was great. He just didn't end up being my very, very favorite. Not that he wasn't great. And I'm, I'm sure CeeLo's gonna do wonderful things with him. That sounded wrong, so I'll just. <laughs> We'll just move on, right? <laughs> There's a lot of things wrong, like when Blake says, like, I specialize in 16-year-old girls, and I'm like, don't say that. Don't Never. Don't say that. And I specialize in 16-year-old girls. So Melinda, who else did you like this week? I know you, you liked someone more based on personality almost than vocal. Okay, listen. <laughs> the Voice for me is one of those shows where I like it for the entertainment value. Like I don't completely like go just for the singing and I know that's off script for me, but I just, the entertainment value of Nick when he sang Hit Em Up Style. <laughs> and <laughs> listen. I was beaming in the beaming, just beaming. Nick needs to be my bestie. Like I want him in my back pocket. I want him to go with me everywhere. He was bragging. I was coming down to hear the just to Dragon. I don't necessarily know that I believed that Nick dragged all of his man's things down the hill and put him out on the curb from that vocal. I mean, a certain lady named Candace Glover sang that in Hollywood Week of Idol this year, and I felt like Candace definitely, you know, took things out of the cash box and, and she did grab Soleil and Mia. And I think Nick was more like a, a theater, like, like he's playing a role of that. 
I think him hitting on Adam Levine was possibly <laughs> the funniest thing to happen over four hours of week one. So I've got to give him that. Hilarious. What's going on, handsome? What's your name, handsome? The other person I can't imagine the live rounds without is Tessan. The power and vocal control yeah. on Try was kind of astonishing. You gotta get up and try, try, try. Absolutely amazing. Her tone, I mean, ev everything about her is wonderful. And I, I'm one of those people that just likes it when people bring a little maturity to the song. I, that's just me because some kind of way their taste and when they when they do the runs a certain way and and all of that like they just have restraint enough restraint to make me happy but then they just go crazy. Can I say that my faves, though, can I put two in the same category? Do it. Holly and Caroline, they were from two different nights, and they just had that quirky, quirky sound in their voices, that light, just really, like, lilting tone. So, she's a pixie. Strip to the ways we fall into the river. And they brought something to the songs that I didn't expect. I'm going back to the stars. It makes me a little nervous that one of them is on Blake's team. Holly Henry. Yes. Let me just put that down here under Team Blake. Because I think that she's going to go home too early just because he, all he knows is country. You know, Blake was obsessed with country last season, but he has okay. had non-country singers plenty of times in previous seasons, and he doesn't seem to be going with, well, you know, we didn't know in season four that he was going all country until we got to the battle rounds. And he's like, I think I'm going to pick an all country team. Goodbye, Grace Askew. And I was like, <laughs> this is what I'm saying, though. You don't think he's going to do that again? I don't think even... so. You know, you look at Dia Frampton or or that okay. dude who won season two, name to be determined. It's clear he is willing to work with non-country singers. And I think last season he was just in that like all country you know, I'm country. I know, but then he turned Cassidy into a country singer. Like, I just, he, for two seasons now, for that, me. That you, do, you do have a point. It does scare me that that Emma Stone-looking girl is going to be turned into a, she's not a country singer. You the other girl, Caroline, from night one, was really adorable. I sort of liked when she giggled when, when CeeLo turned around yeah. and made eye contact with her. Over. <laughs> but I don't think that she's got the power that Holly does. And I think that's always troubling when mm -hmm. you get to the live rounds and Banzilla comes roaring out of the back. I think if she gets control of her nerves, she can do it. I want you to start believing in yourself. And I actually disagree with the placement of both of them on your list on TV Line. <laughs> so let's just be clear on that. I feel like you place them both way too low. Let's just hope Holly is around long enough for us to see if she's <gasps> as good as we for think she might shame. be. You know? Whatever. I've just got to ask you, were you a little bit sort of uh, when the scripted elements came into this week's uh. episodes of The Voice? You sing like a soldier though. Who? Believe me, no one would suspect your manners to be rehearsed. <laughs> it was the dumbest segue. I actually was. Uh, I was in the Air Force for four years. Just ask, like, what do you do for a living? Or what's your background? Don't be like, you sing like a soldier. That was just, it was just so stupid. That moment, and then when Christina pretty much just went straight into, like, burlesque acting mode and was like, <laughs> do I know you from somewhere? You look familiar. Do you... Do you act at all? Where do you think you are in some Regency costume drama? Daddy! You gotta be kidding. Don't ask these people to act. Even Blake at one point was like, What's this the story with that guitar? Because that's not everybody's first guitar. Random, and I don't believe that that would have ever come out no. of your mouth naturally. My dad had this guitar since I was really little, and there was one time we didn't have enough money to pay rent. The voice producers should accept that maybe not every contestant's backstory package is going to tie into what happens on stage and just let it sit. It's a television show and a lot of things go on behind the scenes that they try not to let you know. But if the premise of the show is that the judges have no idea 
who is behind them singing, like <laughs> no idea, then you can't have them being like, you sing like a soldier. Like you can't, you can't do it because then that ruins your whole little, your whole little package there. Because now we know that somebody has seen them somewhere. Somebody knows their story and somebody told these judges, oh, you're going to really like this person and then you should ask them this. Somebody knows something. It makes you want to put on a monocle and, a, and like a pipe and investigate, you know. Hmm. <laughs> and I specialize in 16-year-old girls. Hi, I'm Allison Bray. And I'm Joel McHale. And subscribe to ENT TV. It's just ENTV for all your entertainment news. No, it's E E N T V. It's just E N T V, so whatever. It's E N E N T E V E. Unless it conflicts with any thing, channel or company we work for. I'm Allison Bray. Signing off.